ladies and gentlemen, we have Joel from Media Glitch. Um, can you run us through, like, take us back. When did you when did you get started with the Media Glitch channel? What what was your intentions? What was your focus? I mean, what what inspired you to have a YouTube channel? Okay, so um, before it was Media Glitch, it was actually called IQ Review, um, which is funny. Don't ever look those videos up. They're really, really bad. Um, that was like the first channel uh, that we had. Um, but actually, um, I was, uh, I had been living in Mexico like a good portion of my life. And I came to America and um, I was really, I, I don't know, I, I don't, I was, I was kind of missing Mexico. wasn't sure I could. I was going to like fit in here. You know what I mean? It was a very different culture to me, um, which is crazy because I was born here, but you know, it's, it's just a long story, but I, I was having a hard time, uh, being in the U S and so I was just like, I was sitting there, I was at work and, uh, my buddy's like, he's seen me, uh, who's Brian Lee, who was, who wasn't on media, but he was on IQ review. He's like, Hey man, you know, you look down. And I just kind of explained to him. He's like, oh, dude, man, I just watch Netflix when I'm, well, I'm like, what's that? And he's like, Netflix, man. You don't know what Netflix is? I was like, no, nah, man, we didn't have Netflix in Mexico. And he told me about it. And I went and I put it on my PS4 and like all these movies digitally appeared. And I was just like, oh my gosh, America is beautiful. Like it's the greatest country. Ever. And so I, I said, man, I told my buddy, I said, hey, Dude, let's start a channel where we review Netflix movies. And we call it the IQ review, like the instant Q Netflix uh, review show. And we started doing that. And, um, and, it's, and, and, and no one watched it, of course, like most YouTube channels. And so, but uh, they started yanking movies um, off of Netflix that we had reviewed. And so we're like, man, this kind of sucks. And, uh, I was just thinking like, man, what if I, uh, what if we called ourselves a media glitch? What if we rebranded did a whole different thing? And then we could do movies, we could do comics and we could do video games. That was the, the whole idea. And the body who started with me was, it was me and Joan who was on the first episode of media glitch. And she was on media glitch for years. It was me, her and him that we were doing the IQ review and uh, he, and, and Brian said, you know what? No one's watching this. I'm kind of done. It takes a lot of time. He was doing all the editing and stuff. And so, uh, he took, he's like, I'm out and he quit. And then the next day I got a call from, uh, Comcast, like the, you know, the cable TV station. They're like, Great. Hey, we've seen your show on YouTube, the IQ review. Would you be interested in producing that for television? And I was like, wait, what? Like someone watched our show that wasn't our mom? This is great. Like, um, <laughs> I said, yeah, we had, we had a meeting and I went in there and, uh, before I knew, you know, we were like, oh yeah, um, yeah, it's a TV show and keep producing the content you're producing and we put it on TV. And then it just started taking off on TV. And so that kind of became the priority, um, for Media Glitch and, 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 it's funny because um, none of our movie reviews were really hitting. None of the comic stuff was really hitting. But on TV, they were loving the garage sale pickup videos, you know? Because I'd right. go, if you've seen some of those old garage sales, you know, I'm finding like Conker's Bad Fur Day for like 25 cents. I, I don't even know how many Conker's I had in, in the past. Like, I've had all these insane finds. And, uh, they were loving it. And we were getting, uh, about 98,000 weekly viewers on TV. And it got so, like, it got so crazy that, like, I would go to garage sales and, you know, film in the videos that people were like, oh, I watch you on TV. Or I'd go to a garage sale and there'd be a guy with a big box of video games leaving the garage sale. Like, he had just bought all the video games. He'd show and he's like, you know, walking past with all my video games I need to buy. I'm like, oh my goodness, this sucks, you know? Um, but uh, it just never, I did on, on YouTube for a little bit. Now, I feel like now we're kind of, we're kind of like starting to, you know, get a, get our, our, our uh, 
uh, floating down in YouTube. But that's kind of like, that's a long, man, I, I'm sorry, I get like these crazy long answers for everything, but that's kind of a, how it was birthed. Yeah. And uh, the TV show said, hey, can you just not do anything else but video game stuff eventually? And then we just became an all video game review show. That's what it was. That's how it was birthed. Great. Well, I, I love all the detail. I mean, this is this is stuff that, you know, that if, if like somebody that's new to your channel is going to want to know this background. So that's, that's great for me. The more detail, the better. Um, let's talk about growing up, though. Like, what was... What were your systems growing up in, from your childhood? What, what were you getting at, like, Christmas and birthday gifts? Gosh, that's a, <laughs> that's a crazy question. Um, I didn't, you know, I grew up kind of uh, kind of poor, kind of uh, um, parents were drug addicts, you know, uh, type of thing. And uh, I remember uh, playing. So I'm going to go out on my, my patio here. And... Uh, I remember uh, playing, um, you know, the Nintendo at my friend's house, the 8-bit Nintendo, and just going, man, this is amazing. If I could have this one day, oh my gosh, I would tell people about it. I would always talk about it. I would be dreaming about it. And then one day, my mom, who is amazing, um, uh, one day she somehow afforded <laughs> or was able to afford uh the, the nintendo entertainment system and uh i remember of course my mom's a jokester so she said she was searching all the stores everywhere couldn't find it waited till i was crying and then she turned around the corner and said ta-da you know and showed it to me and i was like oh my god and um and i so i just grew up um with that nintendo entertainment system i was there was all because i uh, i think because we were we were poor because uh, I didn't have very many friends. I was bullied. I had, that Nintendo was like my best friend. Uh, right. Like, you know, I just, all I cared about was coming home and playing the Nintendo, which turned into, I actually traded my Nintendo to someone for a Sega Master System um, because it had Rostam on it. I don't know if you know that, that, that game. Um, uh, because uh, I would play Rostam at arcade. Like, oh my oh, god. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like... Evil, evil with the sword, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game with the sword. Um, he's, he's like, uh, he's a barbarian, kind of like a Conan, uh, you know, type of game. And I loved that, and I found out that there was support on the Sega Master System, so I traded my Nintendo. And for that, uh, a kid traded a kid for that, and then that brought me into, like, oh, the Sega Genesis is coming out, you know? And uh, there was another game I played a lot called Spellcaster on the Sega Master System and System and Fantasy Star and all these other games. And I was like, oh, when we moved into the, to the 16-bit era, I went right with Sega. Um, and I mean, I did play some Super Nintendo too, you know, of course, uh, later, but my focus was always on um, the Sega Genesis. And then uh, when I played Revenge of Shinobi, which, I mean, if you watch the channel, it's no surprise. And I'm saying, you know, Revenge of Shinobi is my favorite game of all time. I love it to death. It's like, <laughs> I played it last night on my stream. Uh, that's, you know, uh, I just love that, love that game. And uh, played Sega, and then I moved on to, like, the TurboGrafx-16. Um, I actually bought a Super Nintendo for a minute, and I ended up trading a kid. Um, this kid who was, I met out, he was out by this pond, and he was fishing, and, and I was walking out there, and he, he was talking about how he had a TurboGrafx-16, and I was like, oh, I got a Super Nintendo. He's like, oh, I wish my mom would have bought me that. And I was like, well, you, let's trade. And we traded. He had the CD attachment and everything. We traded straight up. And at the time, he definitely got the better deal, but I got to grow up having a TurboGrafx-16 and falling in love with some of those games, you know? And then, uh, and, uh, then I moved, you know, we moved, I moved on to, you know, Nintendo 64, Sony PlayStation, and right around then I get, uh, uh, and you know, this might go into media glitch history about road to recovery. Um, you know, I get so bad into drugs and stuff that I'm like, I can't, I, I, I sell everything. Um, and I lose all my, my collection and everything that I have had nothing for many, many, many years, almost until I came to America. So 
I don't know if that's a, like, the, is that is that answer your question or not? No, well, you know, I, I, the, the thing that remains constant throughout your whole life is the video game, so, you know? And it's, yeah. You, you, you know, for a while, like you said, you sold them off, but then you came back to it. You know, I, I love the success story that you're able to overcome that, though, you know, that, that addiction, and you were able to, you know, to move on and, and have all this focus on all these creative. I mean, so, I mean, that's the kind of stuff people want to hear. That's awesome. That's a triumph story, you know? Yeah, and like, um, I mean, today I feel, I feel like video games is still like my form of uh, uh, anxiety medication, it's my form of relaxation. It, you know, it's my escape, you know? Because even though, like, you know, when I'm, I'm, I'm you know, because I'm a film director and that's my full-time job, so um, when I'm not... I'm sad, or I'm a I'm a family family man. You know, I got uh, four kids. I got a wife. You know, once uh, once everything's taken care of, that's my that is my escape right there. Because like just chill, you know, clear the mind. And uh, or if I got to go to uh, you know uh, one of these game gaming conventions and you're around people all weekend long and you know doing interviews or whatever. Um, you know, I don't like, I'm not, you know, I'm not a uh, very public, um, I don't know, my wife probably not one. Oh, there, are they? Oh, here, sorry. Um, sorry, I got to move spot, though. Oh, my goodness, okay. So, um, uh, I lost my train of thought, sorry. Um, yeah, so, like, you know, you know, when I come back from one of these times or something, I just kind of, like, use video games to kind of decompress, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you can, I get, it can build up a little bit of anxiety around huge crowds, but I'm crazy as it may seem. I'm always in them, you know. <laughs> All right, so it's, it's video games, man. It's just like my. It's the friend that never, that never lets you down. It's all and it's always going to be there, you know. And uh, absolutely, yeah. My love for video games is deep, man. It's deep. <laughs> And let's jump to your other let's jump to your other passion as a film director. Let's talk a little bit about your your personal inspirations. Your, you know, what, what growing up, what were the directors that that you, you saw their vision in film, and you said that that's what I want to do. That's what that that type of that type of movie or that type of um, you know. That type of script, that's something that I'm interested in. What, what, what were some of the directors that, that really inspired you? Um, well, you know, I think like most kids, maybe growing up in the 80s, you grew up watching uh, Star Wars. You grew up watching um, Ghostbusters. Um, you know, I, I got to I gotta thank my mom, too, um, for kind of my some of my passions because... My mom loved horror movies, loved them to death. Right. But she could, she was definitely afraid of them, man. And she could never watch them alone. And so I remember at three, three, four years old, you know, her sitting me there, <laughs> you know, just so she would not be alone watching these things, you know. And I, and did it, did it scar me uh, for life? Maybe. I, I can't go into the ocean because of Jaws. Um, <laughs> You know, watching Jaws, Jaws as a kid, but I grew up watching Jaws. I grew up watching um, The Shining. I grew up, you know, watching Suspiria. Uh, all these like uh, horror movies, man. Hellraisers. I, you know, like I mean, I, if there's a horror movie out there, I've seen it. You know, and uh, right. So those were, were were big inspirations for uh, to me. Never really thought like. And that was when I was watching, I was like, you know, one day I'm going to be a filmmaker. Never in my life did I ever think that. Um, the only time that I thought, is this possible? Or just, because it, it seemed like that Hollywood seemed like a whole nother world. Like you're born into it, you know? Um, right. So-and-so's dad does it. You grew up doing it, so you're doing it now, you know? And you got to have connection. And then I got to have, yeah. Yeah. You gotta just kind of know what you're doing, and I remember, man. Gosh, I, I think I was in high school, or I just got graduated. I can't remember what I was watching. 
I was watching TV, and they were talking about uh, a Sundance Film Festival, a movie that had just kind of like, like taken all the awards, and the dude just paid for it on his credit card. And he shot it in a little, uh, in a little convenience store. It's black and white, and the movie was called Clerk, Kevin Smith. You know, right? And I was just like, is this is this like possible? Like, nah. and, and it was just kind of like. I remember that day vividly and thinking, man, is this something that anyone could achieve? You know? And, uh, yeah, and then, like, you know, you you flash forward. I remember, like, was it last year or something? I'm on stage with Kevin Smith, and he's talking about Beautiful Prison. And I'm, like, he's talking about my movie. We're having a conversation. I'm like, what is this? This is crazy. You know? This is insane. Like, you know, how did I get here? And, uh, but I think, you know, I was, uh, when I finally stepped out to, to try it and write the write a script, and I was in Mexico, and I had watched a show called Space. I don't know if you know what that is. Um, have you ever heard of Space? No. No, I haven't. Okay, so have you heard of Edgar Wright? You get Shot of the Dead, Scott Pilgrim, Hot Fuzz. Oh, I absolutely. Know. I definitely know the movies. Just the name is, I wouldn't be able to tell you the name. Right. He did Baby Driver. So um, he had done a show called Space. And I was just like, that was the motivation to like, okay, man, like this is how I would film anything if I filmed something. And I was so inspired. I got up and I looked at my wife. I said, let's let's write something. And I'm going to try to film it. <laughs> That's exactly how it went down. And me and my wife sat down and we wrote a script together. And I got some friends, and I we paid them in fried chicken, and we all like acted out this script, and and we showed it to our friends, and our friends like, oh, can I get a copy of this? Can I get a copy of this? And this is before like YouTube, right? And so I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're just doing, we're making DVDs of of this little TV show, little TV pilot I did, and uh, and man, there and copies are being made of copies are being made of copies. And then the next thing I know, I got invited by this Argentinian producer to sit in on a script writing session that they were going to film a movie in, in the city that I was living in, in Mexico. So I was like, yeah, man, I can sit in. And, and I was supposed to just, like, give ideas for jokes. And I just started giving ideas and what they should do there, here, here, here. And I think I, I may I felt like I overstepped my bounds that meeting, but and I kind of like, well... You know, I think I should get going. And, and as I was leaving, the producer ran up to me. He's like, hey, how, how would you like to direct this movie? And I'm just like, wait, wow. <laughs> you know? Uh, and then the next thing I know, I directed that movie. And uh, and it uh, came out in theaters. And, I, and, I, um, and, and it got seen by the right person. And then that led to my The Beautiful Prison which was, you know, Ameri well, it was a, a, a Mexican and American collaboration, you know, uh, from financers and, and, and producers. And we shot, and we even shot it in both countries as well. And so, man, I'm just, I think the long answers now. <laughs> You're like, wow, that's a long answer. But, um, yeah, I just, and, and, you know, filming Beautiful Prison, and it was awesome, and it brought me to the U.S., uh, I mean, that's one of the things. There's many things. That's a whole another long story and another long interview. But um, and right now, you know, it just keeps it keeps growing. But like my inspiration, you know, it's the, you know, the, you know, the George Lucas, uh, uh, the Quentin Tarantino's, you know, the Edgar Wright, uh, uh, Kevin Smith, all those. Those are those are my inspirations. You know, Peter Jackson, you know, stuff like that. Um, what I love about what you said is. Um, what I love about what you said is it's ins inspiring directors to you that were both big and small. You have as big as it you could get with the stage sets and the props and the makeup and the design with, with like a George Lucas or Spielberg. And then you go down, you go to like a Kevin Smith, it's grassroots, it's black and white. It's like, let's, let's mm -hmm. shoot this with friends. Let's, you know, right. let's fuck it with our comic book collection. So I, I love that, um, the, the names you gave for your inspirations were were 
from movies that were made uh, big to small. I love that. Yeah, and what's crazy and is uh, that's what probably that's what probably inspired you. Like you said, that you could do it when you saw Kevin Smith. When you saw Clerk, you're like, wait a minute, maybe maybe I maybe I can do this. But look how he's shooting this. Look look at the budget he had. Right. Yeah, and and, and um, you know, and, and uh, Kevin Smith's awesome. But you can tell, like, a Kevin, you can tell Clerks, you know, that's no, it's not Star Wars, you know. <laughs> it's not Indiana exactly. Jones. It doesn't have all the, the famous, I don't even know if that camera moves at all uh, in that movie. But, like, uh, it was just, like, so simple to the point. Like, oh, man, okay, maybe. That, I remember that that's the seed that was planted. And then I really feel like, um, you know, then watching Edgar Wright space. Uh, and even the, uh, the Office UK, it wasn't in the, it hadn't been, been made in the US yet. Uh, but that too was like, man, I, I can, maybe I should try. And that's how my whole life's been, I think. Let's try. Let's see what happens. So now with like, you know, with like Shaun of the Dead, with like Shaun of the Dead, for example, did, did, is what connected you with, with, with that movie is, it's not just horror, it's comedy in there. Is, is that one yeah. of the elements that, because that's what I think of when I think of, when I think of those type of movies, that that's what, you didn't see that as much. In the 80s, you saw more of a straightforward gore or horror or, you know, practical effects. You didn't, there was maybe a little comedy, but not, not right. to the extent like a Shaun of the Dead. Is, is that kind of what appealed to you too? Yeah, um, I mean, Shaun of the Dead is just like, a, it's, it's an amazing achievement in cinema <laughs> like the way that he was able to do a rom zom com like you know romantic zombie yeah. zombie comedy uh, just the mixing of genres and uh, definitely a big inspiration on, on, on Beautiful Prison because if you watch Beautiful Prison it's a mixing of genres but even more than, than that movie too was um, a movie called From Dusk Till Dawn have you ever seen that? It's oh, uh, Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino where you think you're watching this whole, like, monster gangster movie play out, and then all of a sudden it flips the script on you, and you're watching the vampire movie. You're like, holy hell, what the heck just happened? And so... I love um, how... Um, um, big... I love how badass Clooney is in that, and I love that that's yeah. like... You, you, you have to get a full a full acting performance from Quentin in that one, because you, you don't see... You don't see either of those two things that much, like Clooney being a badass, full-on... And Tarantino really, because usually in his own movies, he's just in there for a second. So I like that he actually, right. actually did a good performance in that as, as an actor. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's uh, totally mental in that one. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like it, but it all like, I hope, man, one day I can mix the two loves together and make yeah. like a video game movie. One that we got, with that one that's like, oh my gosh, made by someone who loves video games, you know? Well, let one me ask you, you don't this. Walk out. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Joel. How did all the years of filming Media Glitch inform your directing? How did, what were some techniques, if you can somehow pull from that, what, what were some things that you were able to pick up from doing the Media Glitch show? It did. Well, yeah, we didn't try any of that. I, I would say it's probably reverse, uh, you know, because I continue to work on sets, uh, TV shows, um, and so I take what I learned from there and apply it to Media Glitch. But the, the cool thing about Media Glitch is what's, what's helped me as a director is being in front of people, leading the team, um, because Eventually, Media Glitch would become more than just a TV show that ran Friday nights. It became a live TV show. And we right. shot it live, and it aired live. And so, if you watch some of the episodes, you know, people, you know, you can see in the comment section, people are like, man, why don't you, you know, you messed up. Why didn't you cut that out or edit it out? I'm like, it was live. That's what went down. Um, <laughs> so, like, you know... Uh, if there was a mistake, if someone farted on set, if some, you know, all that stuff is there, you know. And I never wanted to take it away, you know. I take it, right. take that out. I wanted the people to go, 
and people would always say, I don't understand is that like you're, you're, you're a review show but or we'll get it in the comment section a ton like hey man like you could have done that review in like five minutes why did you guys linger so long and then I gotta explain well we gotta make it to commercial they're like what commercial what are you talking about I'm like we're a TV show first a YouTube channel right. second you know so Sometimes that exactly. just it didn't work. It didn't work with the YouTube formula. But I would say, like I like, if you watch some of the um, some of the skits on Media Glitch, or the Roger Recovery series, stuff like that, I would take like some of my filming things I learned in the film world, and we would do these skits, and we just have so much fun. You know, so I think like uh, it's not so much what I learned from Media Glitch, but more what I learned from film world and brought it over to uh, into the media glitch world, you know? Well, what's funny is that right game. now we're watching footage of you uh, interviewing Happy Console Gamer, and the, the parallel between the two of you guys is the same two loves. Um, video games and movies, because he took... He had a video game-related show on, on a YouTube, but then he started a channel with one of his friends, uh, Film Fury, where they do movie reviews. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting seeing the two guys there. Yeah, and uh, uh, Johnny's a good friend of mine, like um, probably one of the one of the first people to see like Beautiful Prison, you know what I mean? Um, and I remember us talking about it and stuff. And I think he may, I, I'm trying to remember if he's seen it before even hit theaters. Uh, but yeah, he definitely, we, we uh, I th we, we do kind of share the same mind, you know? <laughs> we could talk about uh, the stupid stuff for hours, you know? Video games and, and uh, our love for, like, Big Trouble in World China. And then, and then we're into Fantasy Star. And then we're into Eve, you know? And then we're back into, you know, uh, other other types of movies. So, uh, yeah, for sure, you know? I've been, uh, I feel like I've got to, to meet some really great people because of Media Glitch, you know? And, uh, right. And I've been for years now. I've been, I've been. This is crazy. Like I moderate the Mortal Kombat panel. You know, I moderated the 25 year anniversary Mortal Kombat panel. And then from that, wow. every year they've been asking me to come back to moderate this. And I'm just like, man, this is crazy that I'm sitting here with you know Daniel Pacina, uh, you know, or all these all these awesome people who who acted out the games that I love so much. You know. And uh, it's just surreal sometimes, you know. And so uh, I, I mean, I, I, I love meeting with so much because it's definitely um, open doors to, to meet a lot of cool people, a lot of like-minded people. Because when you're a kid and you're you're a gamer, when I grew up, like now, you play video games, it's cool. Now you read comics, it's cool. When I was doing it. Man, we were the nerds. We were looked down upon. We were the losers, right? right. right. And so, and, and and those losers would kind of like hide in the corner, in the shadows, and we would find each other. And you'd find the other kid that was playing Zelda, or you found the other kid that was, you know, uh, trying to beat Fantasy Star. And so, like, you, and like in your mind and in your life, you're always looking for uh, that person to connect with. And YouTube is like this, like, Hey, look at all these other people who grew up like you, you know, and is an instant connection there, like with with Johnny Happy Council Gamer or with um, Jimmy. Uh, he does a show called Lots of Games. Um, we connected because he did an Eve review, and I was like, man, I, don't, I didn't know anyone else knew what Eve was, you know, when I was when I when I started watching YouTube, uh, YouTube videos, and so I reached out to him. I did an interview with him, and man, now we're like super good friends. I talk to him like every week. He's been out of the house, you know, yeah. hang out, you know. And he's it's like all the way across the country, but we we managed to make it happen, you know. Right. Let me ask you this, Joel, because what you said is interesting to me. I think back to the Nintendo NES, right? Didn't they sell a hundred yeah. million of those things? Did they sell like a hundred million? And the I mean, it was I a popular you that, system. Yeah. The reason I ask you that is because isn't it so weird that it was considered nerds to be playing video games on something that sold 100 million units? I mean, um, one in, what was, I think I remember hearing something like one in three households 
had a Nintendo at some point in by the end of the eighties. And it, isn't it isn't it kind of odd though that people people still put it in, in some kind of a, a nerd a nerd uh, like idea of a nerd that's playing it when so many people have one. Yeah, and I think I think it's like there were a lot of homes had it. And they had like Super Mario, and they had Contra, and they had Duck Hunt. You know, it's right. kind of like the Wii. The Wii is everywhere in every household, and but the majority of people, you know, all I mean, I, I remember playing Wii Sports. You know, um, so like, I think that like there were a lot of households that had it, but there weren't the, and then there were these kids that were they'd go home and they'd play all these other games that were out there. You know, it was more than just like this. Uh, entertainment device that we played on the weekend, you know, to kill an hour or two. Um, and, but, like, because, like, when I was growing up, kids had basketball practice after school. Kids had football. Right. Kids had wrestling. Kids had all these other things. Hey, kids had friends. They just went out and rode bikes back in the day, you know? They got outside, which doesn't seem seems weird now because we're all not able to go outside. But, like, uh, <laughs> And I didn't have any of that. So I was just like, I'd go home, you know, and I'm like, all right, Ninja Turtles, you bastard. I'm going to try to beat you tonight. We're going to do it. <laughs> you know? I don't know if you know Ninja Turtles. How old are you? Just out of curiosity. Um, I just turned 36 today, actually. It's my birthday, believe it or not. So I remember Ninja Turtles. Today. Happy birthday. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, so Ninja Turtles, dude, like... Um, it, on the NES was just like the, that. That was my. Uh, I beat it eventually one day, but oh my gosh, I remember just coming home and looking at it and going, "All right, you mother, let's do this. Let's let's try. Right. Let's try it again." And you would spend from the time you got home from school to the time you went to bed. You know, when other kids were outside playing, you know, having boyfriends and girlfriends, and you know, doing all that kind of stuff, whatever, right? But not me, man. Right. Ninja Turtles. It was okay. Today I got to beat Tyson. Okay. Today I got to beat Contra. Today I got to, you know what I mean? Uh, and you know what, dude? Like, I love that. I love that. Like, you know, like, I made those, the friends I made, I feel like, later in life, those were those would be those two or three kids that I found in school that did that, too. You know? And, and in the year I was able to find a bunch of them. And we all hang out. Like that's why me and Tree Gaming, Radical Reggie, we play video games on Saturday nights and we stream it. That's that's that. That's that bonding that that video games create. And it's a bond that can't be can't be faked. Uh, you know, like well, I'll I'll know I'll, I'll spot a fake immediately if you come in and you're talking about oh yeah man when I was a kid I played this and I played this and I played this but and, 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 you know what I mean. And then we just asked like three questions. We know, and then, did you really play those, or are you just like being afraid? Um, but that right. really bonds us together. Like we can sit there and we talk. And like, oh gosh, you remember this? Oh yeah, you remember this? And I'm not saying you need to have played those games. Hang, you know, because like uh, like uh, my buddy John from Intrigue Gaming is a great channel. Um, he's just now going through all the ease games because he hears us talk about it so much. He wants to know what's that about. I want to experience that, you know. And that's even another cool thing uh, for making media glitch is you get to show these other this, people that there are other other games than Call of Duty and Fortnite out there. You know, you should check them out. <laughs> They're awesome. So, um, so I don't God, look at that. Look how many. Look how how far away on that question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not at all, though. You know, what, what, what's funny is, um, you know, you mentioned Radical Reggie. He, I noticed with him, he collects far and wide. I mean, he'll collect everything from this base to cart to hats. To, I've seen his pickup videos um, in, in the Metal Jesus videos, and it, it's yeah. unbelievable. He gets more games in one month than I probably get in two years. But he, so right. he is really, and he'll get, he'll get games that are imports that I don't know where he's mm -hmm. finding them. And so I know what you mean, like, about how serious certain gamers are for somebody that's just like, yeah, I remember playing Super Mario 3. Well, everybody remembers playing Super Mario 3. 
I mean, right. That, exactly. does, that doesn't mean that. <laughs> now, and that's what what's interesting. Uh, uh, what? Oh, go, no, go ahead. I was going to say, and uh, what's, what's funny about going from somebody super casual gamer to somebody that's super collector, what's, the, what's on the footage right now is, is I think, Lynn, is that how you say his name? He won a Nintendo World Championship? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody like that, that's like savant level of amazing at games. Like, yeah. yeah. Or, or, or Chris Payne has won some. Yeah. Or like Chris Payne, who's won a bunch of those uh, Tetris uh, Street Fighter uh, things. You know, like, I, uh, we had Chris Payne on the stream last weekend. And he came on and was playing me and Reggie and, and Sarmar uh, against us in Street Fighter. And it's like, I put in hundreds, if not, I don't know, thousands of hours of Street Fighter. And, and I can't even get right. a hit on this him. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's just like, it's a, it, everyone has, like, uh, a, their game, right? You know? Uh, right. Like, I get on Mortal Kombat, and, you know, most of my friends, they can't even touch me, you know? And I just juggle them in the air because, you know, I've been playing Mortal Kombat for so long, you know? It's just, a, yeah, it, 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 it's... It's cool to uh, it's 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 cool to see that there's some people that just love something so much that they became so good at it, you know. And I don't think it really is. That's and people might look down on that, but whatever. It's like, hey, man, you know, if you love something, love it, man, with all your heart and all your passion, and do it, you know, and do it the best you can. And I love seeing that, man. And that's why you know I make films, you know, because I love it. That's why I make media glitch, you know, because I love video games, you know, and then, and in the end, when it's all said and done, and we, and, you know, and our life is over, you know, am I going to have any regrets? No. I would have regret if I'd never started media glitch, you know, maybe media glitch isn't a million subscribers. Maybe it never even reaches 110,000 subscribers. Um, was it... Was it, how do you say it? Oh, gosh. What did it, did, did, did it accomplish anything? And I say, yeah, it did, man. It accomplished, like, I got to meet some really cool people. You know? I got to do this uh, yeah, I was cool looking interview at, like, with you guys. I was looking at, like, you know what I mean? like, did you, did you impress yourself? Did you do what you set out to do to the fullest? Who cares what everybody else right. says? Did you live up to your own expectations of what you wanted to do? I think it's more important. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, that's exactly, you know. Um, <clears throat> as long as you're happy with yourself. If you set out to, like, set out, yeah, I'm going to make a YouTube channel so I can make tons of money, and you fail, well, then I guess, you know, that's on you, you know. But if that's, if that's right. what you wanted out of the channel and, and it didn't succeed, Know? But I never wanted like millions of dollars or anything like that. You know, I didn't. The plan was never to become. Uh, it's a creative outlet, man. And uh, creative people will understand this. Like, if you don't get something out of your head, you'll go crazy. You will go right. crazy. And so, like, uh, and I always had to be creating something. That's just like that. Who I am. It's in my blood. You know, if I'm not making movies or making a commercial or writing a script, um, I need to be, you know, making a YouTube video, you know? Or I have to be doing, I there's a lot of other things I do. Like, if you look on uh, that Road to Recovery series, series, I also have, I have a drug, a re- for drug addicts and prostitutes to help get them off the streets, to help get them clean and, and back into society, you know? Because that's another passion I have, is just see someone come out of that world, you know? And I want to encourage anyone who's, who's listening, like, if you have a passion, if you have a dream, do it. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. You know? Had I listened to any of the naysayers, I would never have made my first movie or my second movie or the third movie I'm going into. You know? I would never have the drug rehab center. I would never have a uh, media glitch or, or been on live TV, you know? Or, you know, that's just a couple of things. There's so many other things that I've done in my life as well. Just because I didn't, I just believed in myself. You got to believe in yourself, you know. 
And it's like you took a, a genre and made a movie that your heart is in the right place, your passion is there. Now, if somebody was just to go out there and make a smash hit movie, the movie's probably going to be a piece of crap. But if you, if you put your heart into it and the passion is there and you know it's great, at the end of the day, I believe the people are going to come. It's going to find the audience if the intentions are right. Now, you have to obviously right. have an idea of how to market it. You have to have an idea of who your audience is. But I really believe it's like it's like a songwriter. A, a lot of times, you know, because I play guitar, I write music. If you set out to write a hit right. song and please everybody, you're probably going to fail. If you try to write the best right. song that you can come up with to, to blow yourself away, somebody's going to feel something from that because you're never going to please everybody, right? You're never going to write that smash hit that everybody loves. It doesn't exist. It can't be done. But can you write the best song that you think you can write and the people can feel something from that? Exactly. Yeah, and you're never going to please everyone. (laughs) Right. (laughs) For sure. Yeah, and it's got to be, you got to, like, it's got to be good to you and you got to be true to yourself. Like, it's, if you look at um, my movie, Beautiful Prison, and you look at it, the IMDb rating, it sits at a five. And if you go into the ratings, you'll see you'll see 10 stars or you see one star. Like, there's there's an audience that it connects to, and then there's people that just absolutely hate it. They either hate it or they love it, man. You know? Right. And, it's, and, and the thing, and, you know, art is subjective. You know, uh, the people that grew up like me are going to understand that movie. You know, and that's why it's just like, you know, like it, I did it for myself and I, like you said, and I had to be happy with it. If I wasn't happy, like I remember countless meetings of the producers going, you got to change the ending. You got to change the ending. You got to change the ending. I'm like, no, this is my ending. This is my dream, my vision. This is what I want. Right. If you don't want that ending, then don't make the movie. It's as simple as that. And I never changed that ending. And, You'll see in the, you'll see in those reviews people are like, dude, that ending was amazing, and you'll see, bro, that ending sucks. Like you, you see it, it's just so it's just so like it's one way or the other. And, 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 but in the end, what matters is that I'm happy with it, and like you said, you know that you're that you as the creator are happy with the work that you do and that you make. That's how. Because if you're if you're doing it to please the people, it just ain't gonna happen, you know. And it's and about the people also, that believe. Yeah. It's a, it's about Go the ahead. people that believe in it. So let's talk about, you know, they wanted to cancel Seinfeld before the fourth season. They wanted to can that show, but a few people that were high up enough believed in it enough to keep it going, and it's considered, you know, one the best sitcom right. of all time, right? I, I watched the movies that made us, and you were talking about Ghostbusters earlier. No, but Miss Studios didn't want to make the, the damn movie. It's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's the, the corporate big wigs, they, don't, they, they can't see the potential sometimes. They don't understand. They just don't see yeah. the light. And like you're saying, you know, they want you to change your ending. They, don't, they, don't, they can't look at it from your perspective, your creative perspective. And this is why we have really bad video game movies too um, right because the Hollywood the up and outs go man this industry makes more money than our industry people love it find someone and make this movie you know make another Resident Evil movie that's garbage you know uh, make you know you know the list could go on and on um, where like I hope one makes my both both my love you know of one day you're watching uh, a video game movie directed by Joel Valley. That would be awesome, you know? Uh, I hope that one day I get that chance uh, and then we can see some, you know, and I'm not saying, like, there aren't any good video game movies out there, but it is, like, if you got a director that loved it, loved that series, then you that would come through in their work, you know? Joel, you know the one I wish it would have happened and it's just going to be a documentary now um when seth rogan picked up the rights to do the console wars book into a movie oh, yeah. but it's going to be a documentary now but i thought that would be the ultimate when you put sega versus nintendo 
and you could make that a comedy. You could make. I can't. It makes me so mad that they're not going to do that as an actual movie because I think it would be killer. And it's completely video game. Doing. I thought I heard they no, were doing that. It's a documentary. I was going to go to. I was going to South by Southwest, and I thought it was there. Um, no, you know what? And, and Tyler and then told me. Tyler told me everything. Right. Uh, Tyler, you know what? Yeah, I think footage. he told me something like that too. That they were going to use some of his footage, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I remember. I remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know. Well, I mean, we'll see what happens. You know. Uh, even a documentary, that's still that's still a great achievement. You know. Uh, oh, for sure. I just. You know, you never see, like you said, you never really see that video game movie on the, I mean, besides the, everybody goes back to The Wizard, right? But what else, <laughs> what other movies think of? I'm not, I'm not going back and watching that Pixels movie. I mean, no disrespect to that movie, but yeah. the, the Adam Sandler one. But yeah. I mean, uh, well, you have, you're talking, so there's, there's two types of movies here we're, we're kind of talking about, because you're talking about movies that are like, in, in this world, in Earth, about video games, which would be like Wizard, right? Or Pixels. Right. And then you have movies that are like Resident Evil, which are based in the world of the game, you know? And so, and I don't know if we've ever really gotten that one. I know, like, people love Sonic, the, the new Sonic movie, and I have nothing wrong with it, but it, it's just like, um, it, you know, like, my kids loved it. It's fun. They had some jokes in it. It's great. You know, it's a good watch. You know, that's probably the best, the closest they've they've come to that type of thing. There's an animation like the Dragon Story one. Uh, I don't know if right. you watched that on Netflix. Uh, the uh, Dragon Quest. Now that one is really well done. You know, but the pacing's kind of crazy. But you could tell that that was for gamers, made by gamers. You know what I mean? And it's and it right. kind of shows through where I do see a lot of Hollywood still, and there's a template and a format uh, in Sonic, you know. And I'm not knocking the Sonic movie, but I'm just saying it, it still has. I, I don't think it's gotten to where we want, you know, where we want right. to go, you know. Like I wonder I mean, why like um, the, they haven't given. I wonder why they haven't given uh, Super Mario to Pixar to do something like. Yeah. You know, again, um, you know, you just got to hope and pray that, uh, especially in animation, because it's more, it's, it's just, when you think about it story wise and they break it down, there's just so many people involved. We just have to hope that, yeah, so the people that are involved love Mario, you know, and they love, they don't just like, oh, yeah, I played it in the 80s, you know, uh, but like, no, I've been playing it my whole life, you know. I know all the, right everything about it, and I want to see how do we and take that care and, and 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 take like almost like a little baby and handle it delicately for the fans and make sure they get what that Mario movie they've always uh, wanted. Now Pixar, if they did make a Mario movie, I I, I would have a lot of faith in that, you know, because even right. if they didn't, they would do their research with the people that do. Because those guys do the research, you know? Never bet against Pixar. Pixar. Those guys, they know what they're doing over there, so <laughs> that would be cool. But there are so many great stories, uh, video game stories, that could be told to film. Oh, my gosh. You know? And I know they're making a new Mortal Kombat, and I'm wondering how that's going to turn out. I hope that's done well. We'll find out, huh? Yeah, for sure. If they, if hopefully they get the right direction to do that. Yeah. And we, yeah, we'll see. So, you know, I don't know, man. I hope that one day I get to mix those two. You know, I've been, uh, I feel very fortunate in the career that I've had. And, um, you know, I feel blessed for sure. Uh, so, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll get that opportunity one day, you know. I hope you do, too. H have you have you thrown around any, any, like, potential script ideas? I mean, you wouldn't have to tell us now, but is there anything... <laughs> Is there like a glimpse of any idea in the work that if you if you were to make a video game related movie and kind of dive yeah, you know, I, in? I, <laughs> no, you know what? Um, now that you say that, I should probably get some sort something together at some point. Um, Netflix just 
uh, opened up here down the road from me. Um, they are in the studios that we film at and stuff. They're, Netflix is everywhere now. Right. Where I work and stuff. So, like, I should probably, in case that that situation uh, occurred, be ready for it. I have, like, a uh, written script for um, something I'm, I would love to do, which is a Thundercats movie. Um, so, oh, I have... Yeah. Uh, I have that handy. I have I have obviously other feature film scripts for it. But yeah, I would have to think like what what game, you know, um, a story and with character would would be great on the screen. I need to find that, you know. And that could be attractive to people who maybe they don't know the series, you know. It has, has the lore behind it. Um, yeah, so I, I would just need to do that research. Uh, is there a Dark Souls uh, movie in the works, you know? I don't think so. Yeah, because I've heard that game's got lore to it for days. So maybe that's something to look into, you know? I don't know. I could think of something, but... Uh, yeah, that would be cool. I need to do that. I need to... I need to Take what you said, and I need to be prepared. Thank you for that. I'll give you credit well, well, if it goes down. Oh, <laughs> uh, definitely. Well, I, I, I hope, I hope I lit, lit some kind of little fire. Um, yeah. Speaking of Netflix, speaking of Netflix, and something that encapsulates everything we've talked about: horror, video games, nostalgia, retro. How do you feel about Stranger Things? Do you, do you like the series? I, I, um, I like the first season. Um, right, and then after that, uh, I kind of his the, the funny thing I did a I did, it's kind of what we have already talked about today. I did I did a show I did a review on Netflix on the um, on Stranger Things because I kept getting emails. Hey, you need to watch this. You need to watch this. You need to watch it. So I watch it and I go, well, yeah, this is all the stuff that I grew up on. This is all the stuff that I love. These are all the it's it's, just, it's bits of movies that I've already seen. Like to me, I felt right. like didn't bring nothing new that I hadn't seen before. But I see exactly. all these people who are experiencing it for the first time. And I feel like there's a lot of, um, I, man, I don't want to sound like a punk or anything, but I feel like uh, Marvel, all these Mar Marvel movies and all these, um, like, it's, like it's cool to like, to like these things now. Like I said, as a kid, it wasn't cool to like Star Wars or to like, I, I mean, Star Wars is, was kind of, always out there but like uh reading comics and stuff you know you're a comic nerd or you know you're a you're this nerd but now those same you know the same you know girls that were making fun of me are now waiting in line to see the avengers movie wearing an iron man shirt you know and it's so i i felt like there's a lot of people who just jump on this bandwagon they love everything immediately and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with stranger things like that's a that right. fun first season it was really fun and, and about my my that review that show i was just like bye you know just so you know like it didn't bring anything new to the table that i hadn't seen already i said i hope i want to see where they're going with it and then when season two came out i realized they had no idea where they were going and then season three i was like yeah they don't know what's up <laughs> so like uh right and but not to take away from the show because i feel like the characters are fun you know um but I feel like they're just kind of like feeding off what what does the audience want want you know oh here's season right. one here's this little kid he cusses all the time oh that's so cute hey let's make him cuss three times the amount in season two then let's do that you know and uh, so it's just like I could tell it like, by the writing and stuff maybe they didn't have a plan you know and then season three I was just okay well we'll see what happens you know and I enjoy watching them. You know, but I don't, I wouldn't say like, it's like the be all end all. Sorry if you love that show. Like you're like a mega Stranger Things fan. Um, I would, I just like, I like the first, for me it's one and done. I'm done, you know. What's that? Right. I'm kind of with where you're at. I kind of like the first season the most. I didn't like the second season at all. I like what they did with the mall and a lot of the fan service in the, in the third one. Um, but you're right that the first season really outshines the rest. Um, mm -hmm. I will say, I feel like so much stuff, there's 
been so many great horror movies that it's probably hard to come up with new with new ideas um, for the for the genre. So I feel like almost anything that they would have done, you're gonna think of another movie. But I hear what you're right. saying. It's like nothing really groundbreaking for for the exactly. horror stuff. But it was groundbreaking um, for people who didn't grow up with that. And then I respect right. that. You know what I mean? Like, this is new to this audience, and you guys take it, you know? And I would always talk about zombie films. Like, I loved zombie films as a kid, zombies, and then all of a sudden it became pop culture media, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, now everyone loves zombies. It's, it's insane, you know? And But they didn't grow up watching all those. Like, The Walking Dead, that's new to them. Right, the the, the the concept of zombie, and, and I'm all cool. I'm I'm cool with all that. That's that's great. You know? Um, but you know, I did want to say something about because you had mentioned Tyler from my retro life, right? And um, and I'm friends with Tyler, and I remember watching his stuff, and it's very very inspiring work that he does, um, and. It, that had a that was that was a seed, that he, kind of like um, an inspiration to start the Road to Recovery series that I do on on uh, Media Glitch, right. which is basically, right. you know, because I have old footage of me being arrested, you know, or me, uh, you know, just do on drugs and or going crazy. And I got photos and stuff, and and just kind of like this downward spiral of of my life because of drug addiction. And uh, um, so I just wanted to like, uh, you know, let people know who, who don't know Media Glitch, you know, that, that there's that series I created because I wanted to kind of create something that meant more to other people maybe that could help because sometimes you do get, you get, you get to a, part, uh, a point in YouTube where you can get burned out and it just feels like you're making the same content Maybe the passion that right. I had when he started wasn't there, and I started to look for something that had a little bit, bit more meaning. And and like when you look at like uh, some some of Tyler's work, you know you can see it in there that there's there's the love, there's the passion there, um, and there's a story. And uh, that was like with the Road to Recovery, I wanted to to kind of capture that. It's a lot darker, of course, than than uh, uh, like the My Retro Life. But and but I just wanted to document the journey of me getting back this collection that I had as a kid, you know, that I'd lost because I had to feed my habit, you know, or right. because you know I was partying. There were times where I'd be partying, I'd be all, and I'd be passed out, and I'd wake up, my games are gone, you know, someone stole them, you know, uh, stuff like that, you know, or you just you're selling it to buy crack, you know. And and so it's cool to be like, okay, I have this many years sober, and maybe I can start a series. And I have, man. The audience has been insane, like uh, reaching out to me, messaging me, you know, like, hey, man, I'm, you know, watching your series two weeks clean, you know, three weeks clean, and then I'll hear from them, like six months, man, I'm six months. Hey, I just reached a year of variety today, you know. And it all stems from watching one episode that I did. And I really want to get back to making more of those once this whole pandemic thing, you know, kind of clears up, if it does. So I know, yeah, but sure I, did, I did, I did, I wanted to, like, I'm sure. uh, shout out Tyler for that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's that? I was going to say, I was going to say, I'm sure it gives you a sense of closure for yourself, too, by doing this, that you need people... You're sharing your story. You're 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 able yeah. to close that chapter, but in a way that you're helping other people. You're hearing back from their stories. I mean, mm -hmm. it's you, you, you're doing both things here. Yeah, and I want you know I wanted to show people that there is a way out as well, and it is our, our closure kind of for me. Like, okay, yeah, no regrets in life, right? And I do regret like so wasted. Or being so addicted to coke that I would sell, you know, things that I loved dearly. Like you, I would never think that would it would get like that, you know. 
And uh, right, you know, and I'm a big, I'm a big uh, person of faith. I wouldn't say I'm a religious person, but I, you know, I believe in God, and I just believe that, like, you know, there's second chances for everybody, you know. And whether you 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 know believe in God or not, or want to put that in the mix, that's up to you. But you know, there is a way out. You know, if you're just you know, and and having a good support system, people around you. That, that can help you and that believe in you is even, that's even better too, you know? And I feel like, uh, I, you know, with that theory, I can, I'm like, Hey, tell me your story, man. You know, let me, you know, and I'm, I'm, I, there's, I straight up have conversations with people and I'm like, Hey man, keep it up. Keep going. I believe in you, you know, because sometimes that's all people need is one person to believe in. Right to help them out of that hole that they're in, you know? Because when you go through life, and, and this is me, like, you know, my parents or my, uh, or my, uh, uh, you know, what do you call it, peers or teachers, and I don't know how many times I heard, you'll never amount to nothing. Like, I feel like that, that statement is driven and beaten in my brain. And um, well, I believed it for so many years, you know, until someone out there didn't believe that and said something different to me. And then I was like, okay. And looking back at all I've been able to accomplish, you know, like, I feel like, and everyone's got that in them, you know? Right. I don't know, maybe I'm just rambling now, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're not. You know what it made me think of is, whenever I watch an interview, I don't care if it's an actor, a musician, I don't want to hear about the, the great times an actor had on set. I want to hear about the years that that they couldn't make it in the business and they were thinking about quitting, but they didn't. I w I'd rather hear about the struggles or the hardships and overcoming that because I think that's more relatable. I, it, you know, who, who wants to hear about, you know, you see so many talk shows, right? It's all kind of fluff, isn't it? They, they go on, this is the newest movie I made. I had the most fun I've ever had making this movie. It's kind of a bunch of nonsense, right? When you when you right. hear somebody in an interview and you hear about the struggle or, or the, the the road that they took, that you know they eventually overcame things. That that's more of an inspiring story to me. Right. That's more interesting. I don't know about you, but that's more interesting to me than hearing how great they had, the fun they had on the set. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And I was I was always I'm always it's always hard to hit that upload button, especially like the, the last episode I hit, I did, which was, it was with my mom and, um, and Billy from the game chases in that episode. So it's, it's road to recovery episode three. And I'm talking about when I, the time when I'm 15 years old and I get diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Right. And they, and I'm in a mental home and I'm talking about, and my mom's there and she's sharing stories and I, and I edit it all together. And I'm like, if I upload this week, people are going to think I'm freaking crazy, man. People are going to judge me <laughs> and people are going to, and it's, it's the opposite, man. Like it, people were just like, dude, that's awesome. Or I have a similar story, you know? Right. And I, like you said, it's like people want to, they want to hear where, you were the hardships that you came from because you're not there now. So there's right. a way there's somehow they, the battle was fought and you won and you became victorious. How did that happen? And that, so that's a story I'm telling. Exactly. And you know what it does too, Joel, it shows that how we're all so similar because you know, you look at stand-up comedians. Okay. I guarantee you, 90% okay. of the you look at, they took 10 years to break, Joel. 10 years. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them. They didn't just hand them a sitcom. Right. They didn't just say, they did a stand-up, somebody from the audience in a suit says, you're funny, let me give you a TV show. No. If you look at those, a lot of those stand-ups, they had to bust their ass 10 years doing shows. Maybe they'd get on Johnny Carson or something. Then maybe they get an offer to do a show after 10 years. But you look at that, behind every success story is hard work 
and perseverance. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and you know, and those are the stories uh, they should tell. Like, because I don't know, you know, the, I know I don't know a lot of the the comedian stories, you know. And there's probably sad stories. Like, I know some of the ending. You know, we know how sadly how Robin Williams' story ends. You know, right? Uh, but it would be nice to know how how do those stories begin? You know, and maybe the, yeah, I, just, I guess that's kind of what Road to Recovery is a little bit. Yeah, all those guys from Seinfeld to Kevin James to Ray Romano, I know that they all mm -hmm. uh, they, they all had a lot of years before they gave them a show. Before they... And I can't imagine, like... I don't know about you, but I can't imagine, like, doing stand-up for, like, 10 years and, uh, you know, with 20 people in the audience. Barely terrifying. making your There's bill. There's no way. I don't know how to keep doing that. That would be terrifying. I, I I don't even know how they do that. You know, you put yourself out there, right? And hope and being funny, hoping you're funny. And oh gosh, no, that's that's crazy, man. I'm not, I'm, I'm even afraid to just like tell a joke sometimes in public. You know, <laughs> I don't know how people would react. So no, I, no, but it's, it's crazy. But I don't know, man. Yeah, right. I don't know. Somebody what said, else go on I stage. Tell you? Somebody says go on stage. There's a mic. Make these hundred strangers laugh for an hour. That's not easy. <laughs> oh, right. Well, even like five minutes. You know? Like right. You got a little right. open mic spot. No, that's terrifying. Oh, my goodness. You know? I got like a couple of uh, mama jokes in me, and that's it. Uh, you know, but, you know, there's, 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 there's people that are just, man, they're just funny. They're, they're born and bred for that kind of stuff. You know? And if you now, don't give up on your dreams, which is kind of like, I think maybe one of the things of this interview is just don't give up on your dream and just keep going and keep going, you know? That's why we, we're going to feature channels of all sizes and somebody like yourself who's had as much as you've accomplished is going to be a real inspiration for channels that only have a thousand subs. Channels that only have a hundred subs that are, that are just starting. We just want to build a community here, hopefully, in the long run. And you guys are kind of just starting, right? I mean, how long have you guys been around? After, not even a month. Jeez. But we've already talked to often wow. people like you, like Tyler, um, you know, Tim from Game Chasers, and, and a bunch of other smaller channels. But the, the common theme is the right. passion for the video game, for for the movies, for, you know, that's the common yeah. theme that ties us all together, right? Oh yeah, man! Keep going, guys. I, I wish the best for you guys. Um, you know, I did, I've, I've got tons of interviews on my on, on meeting which as well, but probably not as in depth as you know these hour long that you're that you're getting. You know, uh, which is great. Definitely. You know, you you ask, you ask good questions. You know, keep it up, keep it up for sure. Thank and you. And, and you guys it, to, to grow, grow, and anything you need, let us know. Absolutely, and at this point, I'm going to have uh, my friend Brady here, my co-host. Brady, can you cue up that trailer for Beautiful Prison? Um, guys, this is a movie that's available now for you to get on Amazon Prime. Now, is, is it, is it, does it come free with Prime, or you need to purchase the movie, right? you probably got to purchase it. Oh, if, if you don't, if you have Prime, it'll be free. Because of the, oh, wow. of those okay. deals that we have. I mean, if you want to buy you can buy it on app, iTunes. You can buy it on all streaming platforms. You know, but if you want to, if you have a Prime membership, it's one way to see it for free. Excellent, and a lot of people have a Prime membership. So, guys, all of you with Amazon Prime, after this interview, we want you to immediately go out and watch Beautiful Prison. I mean, you got a hundred reasons to. We got we got an awesome guest here, Joel. He's given us tons of reasons. You've heard about his his inspirations from horror movies. You've heard all about this, and you're gonna you're gonna look at some, uh, some of the some of the scenes right here. It's awesome. If you like zombie movies, if you like eighties gore, this is this is right up your alley. Now, let me ask you this before you go: What was like? Yeah. We were talking about challenges, struggles, right? What was yeah. like the hardest? What was the hardest thing to overcome making this movie as a director? What was what was like <laughs> one of those moments you're like, can I get through this, or can I can I get this done, or? Something like that. Just, 
just one. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> there, there's there's so many. Um, uh, right. Uh, I'll give you I'll give you two like almost meltdown point. Um, one was when we were bringing in all the the, the cinema lenses, the cinema cameras across the border. We had gone through the import export companies. We had paid all the fees. We'd done everything, and they changed the laws the day before we have to cross. And they're like, wow. "I'm sorry, you have to do all this stuff. It's going to take a couple of months. That's not going to happen, you know." And right, I mean, talk about like, you know, your dream being crushed. And man, I'm just telling you, like, like I said, you know. You know, I, I I just started, I just prayed, I just prayed. I was like, God, you got to do something, you got to do something. And just crazy doors were open, and we were able to work it all out. But that was like a moment of just like, oh my gosh, like I got all these actors flying in tomorrow, and there's no cameras, there's no lenses, there's no, you know, and I'm like, ah, oh, this is horrible. And then the other time was I got so. If you see in the trailer, there's like you'll see demons running the street, right? And so um, we had, you know, the makeup team. Like it was uh, Robert Rodriguez, uh, who did Dustin on and all that. His, his oh, wow. makeup team come to, to. They did all the zombies, right? They're they're actually demons. They're not zombies, but they they did all the demons, and we 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 made up over a hundred demons, right? And uh, I had cops shut down a city block. And I was super sick. Like, I was just sick. And I had a, we had a nurse on set. And it's, if, you, if you actually buy the DVD, you'll see behind the scenes, the nurse had to give me injections in my butt every so many hours uh, wow. to kind of keep me going. And there's a point where I was like, I just don't know how, how far I can push my body, like, right. health-wise, you know, because I had been up. You know, I'm I'm like up 48 hours sometimes, just like you know, we just filming and filming and stuff. And uh, it, again, it's just like, all right, man, you just keep going, you keep going, and you'd be surprised what the body can endure. <laughs> Not saying you should do it or put it through that, but what it can endure and what it will endure if you just don't give up, if you just keep pushing on. Man. But that that like that scene, I remember hitting about two in the morning, you know, it's two in the morning, freezing, you got a hundred and plus extras and zombies, you know, you can't quit. You can't. You have to keep going. You exactly. To. You got to get it done. You got to get the movie done. Mm-hmm. There ain't no one else going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, listen, uh, Brady, have we had any uh, questions uh, from the chat? Yeah, uh, Edwin Quesadilla Padilla. You wanted to know if uh, is there any movie that you've seen that you think that you could have done better? Is there what was the question? Is there is there any uh? Is there a yeah, go ahead, Ryan? Uh, is there a movie every movie you've seen that you think you could have done better as a director? Uh, all the time, um, but you know that's that's their that's their vision, that's their thing. Um, I can meant, I can say there's a movie out there that I wish I had gotten that I got, really felt like I could have done better. I felt like that uh, I was kind of I, I didn't like how it turned out. There's several movies like that, but there was one in particular, uh, one movie I was like, man, if I remake, gosh, I hope I can do this. And it's always sad when you see someone else, they get it, they run with it, and that's Clash of the Titans. A bad right. movie, but it's like, um, when you love something so much and you and um, you want to make sure it's treated with care, like, it just was another Hollywood thing. Um, that's just one instance. Um, you know, but like every, you know, it's, it, again, it comes down to artist subjective, man. Like, you know, you, I guarantee you there's movies that you love, dude, that I hate, and vice versa. And so, like, right, I might be, I might see a movie all the time and go, gosh, why did he do that? Why did he do that? Well, that was his vision, you know? And so I can't knock the guy, you know? Um, 
you know? And then there's movies like just that blow my mind. I'm like, in a million years, with millions of dollars, I could never make a movie that awesome. <laughs> so and, uh, I could see the, 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 the total opposite of that, too, where there's just movies that I'm just like, holy smokes, man. How? You know? Even a movie as old as, like, <laughs> Terminator 2. Like, when I watch Terminator oh, yeah. 2 sometimes, I'm just like, jeez. I mean, uh, there's no way I can ever make something like this. It's just so good. Right. You know? So. That's why it's one of the best action yeah, movies ever. Good question. Yeah. That's a good question. Well, though. Joel, listen. Joel, thank you so much for doing this. It's been awesome talking to you. Uh, just to let you know how it's going to work, we're going to upload an edited version of this whole interview in its own video tomorrow, you know, from this live stream. Uh, we're going to put links for not only Media Glitch, but for Beautiful Prisons uh, directly to Amazon so people can get, get, get to see the movie. Um, we're going to put links for specifically the Road to Recovery series. So everything is going to be in that description, and we're going to, you know, tweet that out. Uh, we don't have a ton of followers, but we're going to try to get it out there. And maybe if you could yeah, just, I know uh, you guys are just starting, I will, of course, I will I will help you guys out, you know. Uh, you know, I want to see you guys succeed, you know, in, in your love and your passion. So I'll definitely do that. And also, I just want to say, I'm actually going into production here uh, to a TV series called Behind the Yellow House. That's, that is a working title. It could change. The color of the house could change. Hard to say. Um, but you'll, you'll hear that being announced there's some big names attached i'm directing pretty pretty excited going into that so if they're wondering what they'll be seeing in the future from me um you'll get a whole tv series probably before you get another feature length film actually so pretty excited about that awesome. so be on the lookout for is that. that is that an active imdb link that i could bookmark and is that already no to keep track of not at the moment no not yet okay no, it will be. It'll, it will be soon, but you got. We got to wait till this whole pandemic thing goes, because once, absolutely, you know, we're waiting to announce all the actors that are on board. We're waiting to announce everything, um, you know, until we can start filming it. And there's all these criteria. There's like Lionsgate's got all these criteria that, um, like, how set life is going to be. It's going to be crazy trying to film because of this whole thing. Everything's changed, and so. Um, the precautions, really all this stuff that we're still like, like, it's just so up in the air right now. So at the moment, we're just kind of like waiting. And then once everything's established, big announcement's coming. That's fun. We're, we're excited to see it. We're excited to see it come to fruition. And, and congrats on your, your, your latest project here. Thank you. And thanks for having me on, man. Good time. Absolutely. Thanks for being on. Joel, take care, man. You too. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Keep in touch. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.